That's a soothing sound. Feels like summer. Relaxing. But did any of you get excited? Because if you were a female cricket, that was a thrilling sound. The, <laughs> the mating call of a male of your species. Did you know that in most cricket species, only the males sing? It's the same in frogs and birds. The females don't sing, but they sure do listen. What's going on here? Love is going on here. We're going to take a little bit closer look at the love lives of crickets, and maybe what we discover can give us some deeper understanding about love and attraction in our own species. We'll start with a simple question that has perhaps a surprising answer. What is the difference between males and females? Well, males have penises and females have, well, don't. Um, females are caring. Males like to show off and fight. Females are intelligent. Now, some of these, uh, attri <laughs> <laughs> these attributes may or may not apply, but the surprising answer to my question is this. Females produce few large sex cells, eggs, whereas males produce many very tiny sex cells, sperms. All of the other differences that we're aware of, the presence or absence of breasts, um, willingness to ask for directions after getting lost, <laughs> uh, driving a minivan or a Lamborghini, these are just consequences of the fundamental distinction that I said. Now, um, despite these differences, males and females, they do have the same ultimate goal. Each one wants to maximize his or her reproductive output, make babies. Now, why does the male cricket sing? Well, to attract females, of course. On summer evenings, female crickets are out positively cruising for males. They're searching for husbands, and they're suckers for a chirpy melody. So a male that can produce an especially sexy song can expect to date, wink, wink, who knows how many females. If he can have 10 babies by one female, and 10 babies by the second female, and so on. Well, you'd be practicing your do re mis too, wouldn't you? <laughs> so understanding males is pretty easy. Because their sperm are cheap and plentiful, uh, they go for quantity when it comes to sexual partners. And they produce what's known as a sexual signal. In the case of the cricket, it's the chirp in order to seduce as many females as possible. So where does that leave our female? Don't worry, she's gonna be okay. She's got her own strategies, as you do. But first, why should the female even bother listening to these male songs in the first place? If these chirps just serve to sucker her into a bad deal, why doesn't she just tune out? Is she so pathetic as to be manipulated against her interests into falling for these enchanting Romeos? Well, we don't have to feel sorry for her, but she does have to be clever. Since the female produces only a few eggs, she has very little to gain by seeking multitudes of partners. It's like this. A female can have just as many babies by mating with one male as she can by mating with 20. So it's just not in her interest. She's not interested in seeking a large quantity of partners. What she's interested in is quality. Um, that is, instead of, for the females, rather than seeking uh, to attract many males, 
She's trying to choose the best ones. Now, um, can it be that one cricket can be considered of higher quality than another cricket in some objective way? Well, it might seem unfair, but yes, of course. Uh, a particular cricket could have characteristics that allow him to survive better than another cricket. So let's take a cricket, we'll call him Billy. Um, and he can detect predators faster, more quickly than another cricket, call him Dan. And that enables Billy to make his escape while Dan becomes a frog's dinner. Or Billy's immune system might be more resistant than Dan's. His digestive system might be more efficient at getting nutrients from his food. A female that mates with a high quality male like Billy is going to have higher quality babies than if she mates with poor Dan. Now, if this is true, then all the female cricket has to do is look inside of the bodies of each of her potential mates and try to assess the functional states of his organs, uh, his metabolic efficiency, perhaps his intelligence. Uh, but how can she possibly do this? She's busy, you know. She's got her own affairs to worry about. She has to find her own food. She has to escape from predators that might want to eat her. How can she possibly judge each of the many males currying her favor and do so both um, quickly and accurately? She needs a quick and dirty mechanism. She needs a trick, a kind of X-ray vision to peer into the bodies, into the very DNA of her male suitors. What's her trick? What cue can she use on which she can base her choice of her husband? Oh, she uses the male songs. The male courtship song, its frequency, its loudness, its temporal pattern, contains loads of information, and it's a dead giveaway of the male's genetic quality. Why is this? Well, biologists have developed a theory, well supported, that explains sexual signals. So why the cricket sings, or why the male peacock has this big colorful tail, or why the male lion has a dark mane, and why men want to drive Lamborghinis. Um, in each species, the sexual signal that evolves is a costly one. It's somehow costly to the male to generate this signal depending on the lifestyle of that species. So for example, in crickets, generating the cricket song takes a lot of energy and it also exposes the male cricket to uh, increased chance of getting eaten by a predator. The large colorful tail, uh, that's what this is, of the peacock takes a lot of resources to build and maintain. The thick dark mane of the male lion places that male lion under heat stress, under the blazing African sun. And how many of you can afford to put a Lamborghini in your driveway? So we're going to sum up this little part. Males, they uh, sing in crickets. Males sing in order to attract females. That's easy. But why should the females find male songs attractive in the first place? That's because the male songs contain information that the female can use to base her choice of husband. Now, for millennia, we have attributed our human nature, why we live like we do, to um, the will of supernatural forces, largely. Some even go so far as to claim today that achieving a deep understanding of our nature is either not possible or even not desirable. Better to revel in the mysteries of our existence. Now, this is surely an outdated uh, 
an although romantic view. We used to think that crickets sang for us, for our listening pleasure. I'm happy to report it's a lot more interesting than that. Because we've discovered that there is an elegant set of rules, physical constraints, and natural imperatives that govern the evolution of the universe, shape the mating systems of crickets, and guide our own desires and instincts. Now, you may think that you learned a little bit about crickets today, but I've really been talking about you. Some of you in the audience are males. Okay, not male crickets, but males nonetheless. Do you feel motivated by your many small sperm to mate with as many females as possible? Others of you, the rest of you, are females. Armed with the knowledge that you produce only a few eggs, what are the calculations that you perform in order to conduct mate choice? Let me guess, you don't. At least not in the rational, deliberate manner that I described. But just because these incentives and instincts are not manifested in our conscious thinking, it doesn't mean that they're not very powerful in running our lives. So if we don't consciously make calculations in order to achieve and accomplish mate choice, how do we do it? That's what we have emotions for. The crackling of our brain cells, the swirling surges of neurotransmitters and hormones that we perceive as our emotions, that's our way of accomplishing mate choice. A surreptitious glance, a revealing pause in conversation, quickening of the heart rate. We call it falling in love. Some of you may even be familiar with this. If so, it's almost certainly not the case that you experience this process as, here I am, performing mate choice. But you didn't need to. Your emotions, constrained and guided by biological imperatives and evolved to allow us to overcome the challenges of our day-to-day -day life, solve that problem for you. You simply fell in love. Thank you. <laughs>